Loading. All right, hey everybody, Erica here with One Berkshire, and we are at a gorgeous space on a gorgeous day. We're here at the Hancock Shaker Village, and you might recognize Jennifer, because she's gotten some pretty cool press in the past, yeah. so you might recognize this face. So Jennifer, you were here because you're hosting a pretty snazzy event this weekend. We have a really exciting food retreat called Emerging Tastes that uh, starts tonight and goes through Sunday morning. And we know this is a, the Berkshires are kind of a foodie place. So well, we are the epicenter of food and we really wanted to celebrate that and talk about what's, what's coming up, what's on the horizon in the future in terms of, of, of food and flavors. So we have people coming in from all over the country, uh, food influencers, foodies. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting. And so we're gonna talk about a little more about this event because even if you maybe don't identify as a foodie, but you know you love food, I bet there's a way you can come Absolutely. and get in on this. Absolutely. Okay, so yeah. before we do that though, talk to us about Hancock Shaker. Like what is it, how do, how do we choose to have this event uh, here and what's the connection uh, and tell us about this place. Hancock Shaker Village has been here since 1780. And it's a 750 acre farm with 20 historic buildings. And the Shakers, the Shakers celebrated um, this utopian community and society. And food was a fundamental mm. part. The gardens that yeah, we're I'm gonna, looking let's at. Walk and talk yeah. with me this way so we can see these gardens. Our gardens have been organic since before the word organic was known. <laughs> and we're now. You guys invented organic. Yeah. So we're a CSA. We have medicinal herb gardens. We have vegetable gardens, flower gardens. We grow hops. Wow. And at our dinner Saturday night, it's going to be food from the gardens. So farm to table. Farm That's what to everybody table. Loves. And the table is about 10 feet from the farm, <laughs> as you can see. As you can see yeah. behind us here. This is amazing. Yeah. All right, so we're going to step back in the shade for a second because it's pretty bright. And okay. I know it's, it's a terrible thing to complain about, but yeah. just for the sake of this conversation. So you, we have some guests with us today. Yeah. So Arlen, Carla, come on over. Arlen and, and Kira. And Kira, come on over. So tell us a bit about this event that you guys, let's see, how can, how can we do this yeah. to get everybody in here? Arlen, so talk to us know. about the, some of the workshops that are going to be happening at this Emerging Tastes workshop this weekend. Well, sure. So the workshop, whether you know, you're know you a food in, lover, a food enthusiast, or a food change maker, are really meant to both connect us to some of the things that the Shakers did to create the way we think about food now. Like they were the first ones to get in the business of selling heirloom or sp specific breeds of vegetable seeds, um, or among the first to think about the genetics or the breeding of livestock for flavor, longevity, and those types of things. So huh. we're going to take a look at the past and connect through all of our senses, of course taste and hearing each other talk, but also sounds and scents, and find new ways to connect what we've done in the past with food with what the future is going to look like. We'll have things like tea ceremonies, healing ceremonies, foraging walks, and also talk and hands-on experience with what the Shakers have done that continue to shape how we eat today. One of the reasons I think about how we eat today and how we eat tomorrow is because of a conversation I had with Kira just as we Perfect. were wondering what this event would be like. So mm. what was this conversation? That seems like a good, he set you well, up. <laughs> he did. So the conversation was really about this concept of the future of flavor, what will it be, and moving beyond something that's just in service and agriculture that's just in service to feeding people, but really a deeper question about humans, how humans are in relationship with the larger living world. And one of the things that makes this particular place, Hancock Shaker Village, such a potent place to be having this conversation comes from a number of the very specific agriculture and food traditions that Arlen just mentioned. But also, if you look behind us, there is a really spectacular herb garden. There was an mm. herbal tradition that actually was part of the early pharmaceutical tradition in this country with over 300 different herbal plants that were cultivated and understood for their healing gifts. And this was also a place that while simultaneously bringing in tradition was really visioning how people could be living in peaceful ways in relationship with one another, in relationship with place, understanding that this was a closed system, that what they took out needed to go back in ways that kept everyone really vital and very alive, and that the practices of listening and being in tune and speaking when there was something important to say informed the reflective thinking. So this feels like on many levels a really potent and powerful place to imagine what it's going to be like moving forward as a lot of things change around us how we can be sensible and sensitive participants in that so we're really thinking about the future here the current food situation but the future of food mm -hmm. and it's really interesting to link it to the past because as you mentioned mm -hmm. about the herbal gardens you know when the first shakers arrived we think about 1780 and we're going to actually go into the the laundry machine shop where the hearth is from the very first house from 1780 and the we have journals that indicate that the early shakers learned from the Mohicans 
who were here mm -hmm. about which herbs were good to eat and which ones could be healing. Wow. So we're really, we're pushing it forward it's while very mindful of the past and living in the present. So let's take a little walk because you have something to show us, right, about, about food. There's some food being cooked right now well, in a special cauldron. Yes. I mean, we should say that in the dead of winter when there was two feet of snow, Arlen Wasserman showed up on my doorstep huh. with Brian Albert. We had never met, and he proposed like five different ideas, and I said, let's do them. Let's do it. And so let's go for he it. really led the charge, and, and we've been this triumvirate with all of us mm. in organizing this for several months, and it's going to be a fun weekend. There's also goat yoga. There's a concert. And food is the centerpiece. And actually, Brian Alberg is not here because he's around the corner cooking on his call. And that's who we're going to so go meet go right now. So this yeah. event, as we're walking and talking here, so this event is for if you're an entrepreneur who might want to be a food entrepreneur, mm -hmm. this would be a place for you. Absolutely. So what might you learn if you're if you're that kind of person? Well, I think that it's an opportunity to engage in some of these larger considerings of really what are we looking at as we're moving forward and connecting with people who can be part of the context in which the thing that you hope to bring into being makes sense. A lot of people who are really at the edge of what's happening in food often are out there on their own. They need to connect with the others who can help make the system that they're feeling called into. And they're really needing to think about where it's going, not just where it is Absolutely. today. And so this might and, be a peak. And it's also, it's also fun. I mean, people can sign up for the entire four days or they can sign up for one day right you know, there's picnics there's foraging there's goat yoga there's there's workshops there's talks there's meditation in the meeting house there's all sorts of activities which are all listed and on I, the handcuff shaker village website i do want to mention one other thing before we go look at what brian's doing and while he can't hear which is of course tomorrow night we're also as a part of our day of exploring the land going to take people off site to monument mountain Oh, and while okay. walking my mountain, you know, think about that inspired Herman Melville to write Moby Dick at a time when, like, blubber was important to our economy <laughs> and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then Heirloom Fire, for those of you who follow, like, the rock star event, outdoor event catering, is going to be putting on a dinner for us at, just at the base of Monument Mountain at Briarcliff Motel. So that's a part of the Friday program if people want to join for that. So just, I'm going to turn this around so we can see this cauldron behind us. And, and uh, this is pretty amazing what's being cooked here. Just Different way of cooking. So this is Brian. Hi, how's it going? Tell us what you're up to here. So we're prepping for tonight. We're charring some broccoli rob, some local sweet corn, some game hens, and some grass-fed flank steak. Well, grass-fed cows that produce the flank steak. Awesome. And so the food starts tonight. It does. And then it goes all weekend. It goes all weekend through Saturday night. And uh, tomorrow night's a cookout with heirloom fire. And then Saturday night, Brian is doing a farm to table dinner in our round stone barn. And there'll be a speaker, Chris Jennings, who wrote um, a book called Paradise Now, which is about the search for utopia and utopian communities and, and how radical it is, but how satisfying and how a little bit harebrained. So it'll be a very interesting evening. So it sounds like this weekend, you guys come back over for the conclusion yeah. here. It sounds like if you want to be inspired, this would be a place to be. It sounds like you're going to be in community with a lot of other people who are thinking outside the box, thinking creatively, trying to imagine what could be happening in our food system, and also enjoying some pretty interesting activities, some good food, some good company. Yeah. Am, I, am I summarizing it appropriately? Beautifully. Absolutely. Okay. Perfectly. All right. <laughs> and it culminates with a concert in the barn. All right. So there's live barn. music, there's goat yoga, there's amazing food, there's great conversations and workshops, and all of these amazing faces right. that have come together to make this possible. So we hope to see some of you out here. If you can't make it all weekend, you can still come for a one-day pass? Yes, you may. All right. Yeah. So more information is available where? HancockShakerVillage.org website. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Come enjoy this Bye. day. Bye. I'm upside down.